I'm Karen. Welcome to Texas Farmstead Living. If you have a family milk cow or plan to get one, this video has a lot of information that will help you. Part of owning a family milk cow is learning about breeding and choosing the bull to get the offspring that you want. Now this will depend on if you want to add another milk cow to your herd or if you just want to raise a calf for beef. Here is some video of our Jersey bull interacting with our females. Cows have a cycle of 21 days. And so on, we start documenting that on a calendar and around day 18 or 19, we will put the cow in with the bull. Now after probably day 22 to 24, we will take the cow out because we don't wanna deal with the bull when we are bringing the cows into milk. But on the next cycle, on day 18, we start putting the bull back in the pen with the cow just to see if they're interested in, in each other. Another thing we watch for is the baby bulls following a cow and if there's fence contact with the cow and the bull. If you want to breed your cow with the hope of adding to your herd, then it's very important to learn about genetics. The progeny will inherit traits from both parents, so it's important to learn everything you can about genetics. Remember, your bull is half your herd. When you're selecting semen to AI your cow or buying a bull, each bull will have a information sheet with details about his breeding and genetics. For example, uh, it should say if they are A2A2 or if they're horned. So are polled or have the horn genes. This is in all the large AI um, companies and some of the smaller ones will have those as well. Okay, here are the genetics that we feel are important. To know about. Polled or horned. Later in this video I'm going to introduce you to a Punnett square and that'll help you figure out the percentage chance the offspring will be polled or horned. We have a video about the pros and cons of dehorning dairy calves so make sure and take a look at it. Um, it'll include the pros and cons and um, it's really a very big decision when you are uh, breeding your cow for, to keep the calves. The Punnett Square, um, I've got some links such as Khan Academy and um, some other links that talk about polled horn and skirt animals. And it's very important because if you don't want horns, it's really good to go ahead and select for no horns because you will have to have the vet come out and uh, take off the, the horn buds when they're really little, little and it's expensive and it's way not fun. 
um, our vet has to come and because we like pain um, medication administered. Okay, the second thing we think is important is the A2A2 beta casein. Some people place really high value on this and my cattle are tested for A2A2. I had my cows tested at Genetic Visions, but UC Davis uh, in California will test as well. Um, also, UC Davis will do the polled and horn test. So the third thing that we look for is the kappa casein gene. It's the cheese yield gene and the beta lactoglobulin. That's the butter fat gene. And it might be important, especially if you're gonna make cheese and butter. The fourth characteristic is hand milking teats. Now, the, you know, that's inherited from both um, the cow and bull. So, you know, that's something that you really want to like ask about. Number five, grass fed genetics. This is important if you plan to have a grass fed dairy cow. A mod modern, or I call them conventional genetic dairy cows, will all put her inputs into milk and not into body condition. If a cow is accustomed to eating grain and bred for high production, and you want a grass-fed cow, then you need to plan accordingly. It can be hard for a cow to maintain body weight on grass if she has been eating grain all her life. So pick the genetics that are in line with your goals. So, you, you know, when you want the next generation. It's definitely possible to breed grass-fed genetics into your herd, but it does take several generations and some time. And this is what I did, because 21, 22 years ago, it was not easy to find a family cow. Um, in fact, it took several years of asking around to even find a cow at all. And it ended up I had to buy a cow that had, it was a Jersey cow, but it had been running with a beef herd its whole life. I know two people that really strive for excellent grass-based genetics, Jersey genetics. Uh, one is Ben Gotchel of Holt Creek Jerseys, and he is the one who we bought our Jersey Bull Branched Oak Balladeer Bruno. And Bruno was a herd changer for us. Um, he lived here for, I think, nine years, and he never had one issue or one bite of grain. Uh, ben has a blog, and he's been in the grass-fed movement a very long time, and he's very knowledgeable. So go to his website to learn more about um, grass-fed genetics and other things. Actually, he has a really good article on the A2A2. Another person is Suzanne Nelson Caraman. She is the owner of Reverence Farms in North Carolina. They have a regenerative grass-fed dairy and breed bulls. They offer pastured meats also, and they offer semen straws for sale. She has a beautiful Instagram account and website, and she's doing amazing restoration to our ecosystem and takes a natural approach to dairy. So there are two great resources to go um, read about bulls and genetics. Here is a quote from Suzanne Nelson Caraman that I just love. Breeding great cows is a lifelong pursuit and one in which you never really get there, just closer every year. I love this because as soon as I got a Jersey cow, of course I wanted to immediately start adding to my herd and breeding cows. And it's over 20 years later and I feel just in the last year that we're getting the calves that I have worked hard to get. <laughs> if you decide you want to keep a Jersey bull, here are some lessons I've learned over the last 20 years. Of course, 
when I was new to cows and dairy cows, of course, I made a lot of mistakes, and probably one of the first things I did was buy a Jersey Bull, and I was not experienced. So part of the reason I'm doing a lot of videos on dairy animals is because I've been doing this a long time and I've made every mistake possible, and I hope I can help you avoid some of the mistakes I've made. So here's some points that I think are important. Jersey bulls, or any bull, is not to be trusted. Mr. Roofer has raised and owned many bulls over the 70 years that he's been ranching, mainly Angus and Hereford, but he thinks Jersey bulls, by far, are the ones that you need to watch the most. Maybe not all of them, but the ones that we've had, or a little bit more. If a Jersey bull's looking at you sideways, then you might want to beware. We find that you should not socialize your baby bulls, such as halter breaking, or um, we don't even let them come in the milking stanchion. We don't interact with them at all. And Temple Grandin, which is a very famous person in animal behavior. She has a great article on socializing or not socializing bulls. Um, and I'm going to write a blog post on this and I will link it there. I feel like from raising Jersey cows um, myself when I was inexperienced, I feel like you probably need a person that's been handling with a little experience handling cattle uh, when you're going to get a Jersey Bull. Now maybe, you know, after a while, you can add one to your farm. But I, I do recommend probably for all of you getting your first time cows to use AI or to, um, you know, I guess maybe start with a beef bull. Our Hereford bulls are, seem to always be really, really tame. Our herd bull sire is Holter Holm Lieutenant. And the two baby bulls are sired by our herd bull this year. And they're grandsons of Bruno. A final point I want to make if you're buying a bull, um, and possibly AI straws, and we can talk about that, you know, in a different video. But if you're buying a bull, I highly recommend that you test the bull before you, I mean, test it for fertility, of course, and ask about the herd health. I do have a video about the eight diseases that I test for, and I've been testing for a very, very long time. So you might want to Take a look at that video. Now it's time to learn to use a Punnett square. Why do you need to know how to use a Punnett square? Because it will help you predict the genetic traits that may be expressed in your milk cow's calf. And if you want to raise a milk cow, then you need to know this. Okay, there's two, um, I'm not gonna get too detailed, but this is actually very easy. Uh, must have my computer down. And it just, there's two terms that you need to know. One is I'm left handed homo zygous. So you can guess what that means to a like. In hetero zygous. Okay. So homozygous is having at least one gene pair that contains identical genes, and heterozygous is having at least one gene pair that contains different genes. On this, pole is dominant. Hmm, go figure. So a Punnett square. We're gonna, our Punnett square, uh, you know, this is just 
An example. Let me write the word pun it. Pun it. Can you read that? Pun it square. Okay, P is going to be pulled, capital P, and that's going to be dominant. Can you see that? Okay, little P is going to be, it's called recessive. Okay, so then we have big P, which is pole, and little P, which is recessive for horned. Okay, our example is we're going to have a, let's see, how about the bull? He is a big P. He's pulled, got one gene that's pulled, and a little P. So the pole gene, horn gene, this is going to be the bull. Okay, and the cow right here. She is, let's just say she's horned. And she's little p. Both genes are little p. So she is homozygous, horned, and he's heterozygous. You see? Pulled. Okay, so you just do your square. So you put the large P and the little P. In the little P and little P. Okay, over here, big P and little P. See? Little P and small. Okay, so. What percent is your offspring going to be polled? And what percent of our offspring are going to be horned? So it looks like of the four squares, 50% are going to be polled and 50% are going to be horned. So that's right there. Chance, 50% chance of polled. And 50% chance, little p, which is horned. And big p is pulled. Okay, so your calf has 50-50 chance. Okay, this is important to know. Uh, there's lots of information in the description box and in a blog post about where to go read up on this. I hope that this helps you and from our Texas Hill Country Farmstead to you, have a blessed day and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.